How to Choose a Good Computer by Ethan Ryman. Let's start off with PCs. Now, I know the majority of you guys watching this are probably going to get a PC, so that's why I'm going to start off with PCs. Um, and to start off, we're going to start off with the CPU. So let's start off with AMD CPUs. So the CPU is like your computer's brain, and it's also the CPU stands for Central Processing Unit. Um, the AMD CPU, um, I'd recommend looking for Ryzen CPUs, whether it's a desktop or a laptop, because Ryzen is AMD's current most advancing CPU line, and Ryzen 5000 is the newest series, so if possible, go with a Ryzen 5000 series processor. And Ryzen is most is in most laptops as of right now. Um, and this will be the same with um, every CPU, but always look for the C CPU gigahertz speed or GHZ speed. And on most AMD Ryzen processors, or basically any AMD Ryzen processor, I'd say go between 3 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz. Somewhere in the middle of there is going to be good for most tasks. And then another thing to look for is the core count. Now, you can kind of think of cores as mini CPUs inside of one CPU. So if you have four cores, think of it as four tiny CPUs inside of that one CPU. For most tasks like web browsing, um, word processing, and stuff like that, between four and eight cores is going to be good. Um, if you need more advanced uh, power like um, video editing or advanced web development or game development or app development, basically anything that has a higher workload, go with 16 or even more cores, which will help improve your speed. Also, if you're doing more demanding tasks, look on the higher side of the gigahertz speed, somewhere between um, the, like the higher uh, 3.9 gigahertz up to 5 gigahertz will do good for most tasks like that. On to the Intel CPU. Intel is another brand of CPU, just like AMD is. Um, for a I Intel CPUs, look for their Core Series processor. You're going to see these like Core i3, i5, and i7, and i9. Um, as of right now, the Intel Core i5 and Core i7 are some of the best ones that Intel make. Um, they are currently the ones that will run pretty much everything. The i3 is okay, it's just slow for most more advanced tasks. And even the i3 just doing simple web browsing can get um, chugged down. Um, so yeah, that's why I recommend going with the Intel Core i5 and i7. If you need more power, go with an Intel i7 or even an i9 because those will provide more power um, and you can still get both of those in laptops and desktop PCs. And just like on the AMD processors, you can look for gigahertz speed between 3.5 and 5 gigahertz. Intel processors tend to have a higher gigahertz speed, um, which is why I'm saying 3.5 to 5 gigahertz. That should hopefully get you around for basically any task. And if you're doing more advanced stuff, look on the higher end, like f the 4 gigahertz um, market and 5 gigahertz. Um, depends on what CPU you're getting, but the i7 and the i9 are mostly going to get you up to that 4 and 5 gigahertz mark. And for cores on Intel processors, 4 to 16 cores, just like AMD, is going to get you, for most tasks, if you're doing higher demanding tasks, um, 18 and more, I'm sorry, not 18, 8 and more cores will do you just fine on things like that. Um, 16 I would recommend for as the minimum for a lot more advanced tasks. On to RAM. RAM or random access memory is a small amount of storage on your computer. Um, the RAM is where your programs that you're running in your operating system will store files that it needs at that moment because RAM is a lot faster than regular storage, which is why it loads whatever it can and whatever it needs into RAM because then it'll make your computer faster in most cases. Um, and yeah, it's where program files are loaded into when running apps and games. Um, for RAM on most computers, I'd recommend in this day and age 12 to 16 gigabytes of RAM as a minimum. Um, if you can go more than 16 in your computer, that is an amazing, um, great, that's a great thing if you can get more than 16 because it's pretty easy to get more than 16. It does make it more pricey, but 16 gigabytes at this time, as of me recording this, is pretty much the minimum for most tasks. If you're using Google Chrome, Google Chrome does use a lot of memory, so I say 12 to 16 gigabytes of RAM should be your minimum on Google Chrome. Um, for more demanding tasks like video editing, I, I would say um, go between 16 to 32 gigabytes of RAM. If you can get more, if you're doing like 4K editing, 8K editing, or any other kind of demanding task that's not video editing either, 
uh, definitely go with 16 to 32. If you can get more than 32, that's great. And if you have a tighter budget, you can go with 8 gigabytes of RAM. It's just not, your computer's not going to last as much longer performance-wise. It's just going to get, it's going to turn into a slower computer over time. Um, that's why I'd say going with 16 to kind of future-proof your computer for the next few years. Storage. I'd recommend between 512 gigabytes of storage and one terabyte. Now, one terabyte, you can think of it as a thousand gig a thousand gigabytes and one terabyte will last you quite a few years worth of files um and it's not it's not like an infinite amount of storage it's an okay amount of storage which is why i'm recommending 512 to one terabyte the computer that i'm using has one terabyte of storage and i've had it for just over a year and storage is going okay i mean i delete files every now and again i reorganize them um, one terabyte is what I definitely recommend if you can afford it, and if you can't even afford a computer with 512 gigabytes of storage, 256 gigabytes is okay. It's just not gonna you're gonna need to do a lot more file management um, with 256 gigabytes of storage. And if you can get more than one terabyte, that is great. Um, again, more than one terabyte is gonna be pretty expensive, but if you're doing more demanding tasks like video editing, you're gonna need to store all of your files if you need them on your computer definitely go with one um, more than one terabyte of storage. Operating system. Um, on most PCs, you're going to find Windows on there. And as of right now, Windows 10 and Windows 11 are most common. At uh, this time, a lot of people don't like Windows 11, but you're still going to find, if you're buying a new computer, Windows 11 is going to be on most of them. Windows does have some downsize, um, downsides like viruses um, are more common on those because Windows is so popular. It's more it's more of a thing for um, hackers and people who make viruses to go on Windows because the majority of the people are there it's not like someone is gonna make a virus for Linux because not many people use Linux um, but and also Windows is not the most stable operating system but it's okay for most things um, Linux is an option I have used Linux in the past it can be more complicated and most apps that you would want to use on Windows and Mac do not work on Linux but again, if you want a more secure operating system, uh, different Linux distri distributions are pretty good. Battery power. Now, this only goes if you're using a laptop, but I'd recommend going between 5 and 10 hour battery life. Um, most of the time, that'll last you an entire day's of work. And again, you're probably going to plug it in throughout the day, which is going to last you a decent amount of time. But if you're planning to have your laptop plugged in, pretty much the entire day, I'd recommend going with more performance over battery life because if you're only on the go a few times um, and you don't really need the more battery life, you're just going to have your laptop plugged in, I'd recommend getting more performance because it'll last, it'll be a lot more performance for whatever you're trying to do. And again, if you're keeping it stable um, in one spot plugged in all the time, I mean, if you need a desktop, a desktop would be better for it in that case, but if you still want a laptop, um, definitely go with more performance over battery life. And depending on what programs you're using on your computers, that can affect the battery life. Um, and another thing to keep in mind when buying a PC is always choose a good brand. There are a bunch of knockoff brands out there that are, make computers, but a lot of the time they're not going to be as good of quality as ones from reputable brands like Dell, HP, Lenovo. Um, Dell and HP and Lenovo are some of the best um, laptop brands that you can find, but if you're looking for a desktop, HP, iBuyPower, Dell, Asus, and NZXT are good uh, desktop computer sellers. And again, if, if you need like more proof um, for a good computer brand, most of the time if it's, so, if it's so, sold in Best Buy or other computer stores like Micro Center, um, it is most likely going to be a good brand. Other things to keep in mind when buying a PC, um, for laptops, I'd say you're going to look at pricing between $500 and $1,600. Again, they can be more expensive than that. You can find ones cheaper, but the majority of the time, good quality ones are going to be in that price range. And desktop computers, a good price range to look at is $900 to $2,500, um, and that's going to get you a decently good um, desktop computer. If you're looking to do gaming or heavy load or, or heavy load tasks, expect a higher price because it's going to have more um, heavy components inside, so it's going to be cost more to make them. And if you do need more support, ask a person at the computer store. Most of the time they'll give you a good idea of what you need, but always keep in mind that they might be paid 
um, to recommend you a different computer rather than other one. Let's move on to Apple computers. My favorite are Apple computers, and that's why I've used an Apple computer for basically my entire life. Um, on to CPUs for Apple computers. At this time, Apple's doing a transition from Intel processors to M1 processors, and M1 is their own CPU. It's actually just called the M the Apple M series processors or M the Apple M series CPUs. And for most tasks, I'd say an M1 at this time is a great option for any task. I have an M1 Mac Mini, and it's basically been able to handle 4K video editing um, and simple tasks. But if you are looking for much more performance and you're still looking for a Mac, at this time they do have the M1 Pro and M1 Macs available in the um, MacBook Pros. RAM-wise, 8 to 16 gigabytes is currently offered as of January 2022 on the M1 Mac Mini, the M1 iMac, and the M1 MacBook Air. I think that just because the Macs can go up to 16 is because that's maybe a limit of the M1 processor. Um, but I have 16 in my M1 Mac Mini, and 16 gigabytes, like on PCs, is going to be the minimum for most tasks. 8 gigabytes does work fine, I've seen, um, but if possible, go with 16 gigabytes of RAM. In the M1 Pro MacBook Pro, that's a bit of a tongue twister, the M1 Pro MacBook Pro can have up to 32 gigabytes of RAM in it, and the M1 Max MacBook Pro can have up to 64 gigabytes of RAM. Storage. What amount of storage do you think you need for your Mac? Well, it's pretty similar to PCs. Um, 512 to 1 terabyte, again, are great options. If for a cheaper Mac, you can get 256 gigabytes. That's, that'll be okay, but just like on a PC, you're going to need to have more advanced file management and not storing as much on your computer. More than 1 terabyte is available on pretty much every Mac computer, um, and it's great for video editing and heavier tasks. You can store them right on the computer with more storage. Um, the more storage you can, the more you can store, which is basically the same on any storage and RAM and stuff like that. The more storage you have, the more files you can store. Other notes for Mac computers, expect prices to be higher, but Macs are more stable and overall better than PCs, and I guess you're just paying that what we call the Apple tax. Uh, you're getting a more advanced computer for a higher price. The macOS operating system is great for everything but gaming. Um, Apple's really not had ever the best gaming support. But some Steam games do support Mac, um, but other games you're not really going to get many like AAA games on a Mac because they don't really, most of them are over on Windows. And another thing to keep in mind is Apple provides a free suite of Office apps called Pages, Numbers, and Keynote. I'm actually using Keynote for this video. Um, and honestly, I like uh, the Apple iWork, as I still call it. It used to be called Apple iWork. I like this suite of apps. I really um, think that they're, in my opinion, are better than Microsoft Office. But you can still download Microsoft Office if you want. These are just included free on your computer. And if you have an iPad or iPhone or any other Apple device, um, using iCloud, your Apple devices will sync amazingly together. By this, I mean um, any photos you have stored in iCloud photos can sync between your iPad, your iPhone, and your Mac. Um, text messages, phone calls, FaceTime all work between these devices. And basically anything else that you can do on your iPhone, almost anything you can do on other devices will sync. Same if you copy and paste. If you copy something on one device using handoff, it can um, you go to another computer. So if I copy something on my iPad and I go and I do command um, and command V on my Mac, it'll actually paste what was um, what I had copied on my iPad. So thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, if you did like this presentation, give it a like and subscribe. Um, if this video turns out well, I may do a few more of these other how to buy other things like that, um, other tech things like this. And I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, you can find me at ethanryman.com or here on my YouTube channel. And well, have a great rest of your day and goodbye.